At this point in the season, getting points on the board is what matters. Obviously, it matters throughout the season. But if we're thinking about, you know, oh, can the performances improve? Could this improve? Could this player be better? Sometimes the analytics, sometimes the analysis, sometimes the over uh, compli the com complication of stuff can sometimes get in the way of just saying beating Brighton, the team we've historically struggled with since 2019, 2019 being the last time that we won at home against them. Like, we lost badly last season away to these guys. We've struggled under Jurgen Klopp against these guys, not even just against De Zerbi. In the last seven games, we've only won one. So getting points on the board against them was key. On top of that, this was also a pretty decent performance post-international break. We didn't have Ibu. We had Connor Bradley at right back, Trent still out. We had Joe Gomez at left back. Again, Robertson still out. There's all these kind of things. Again, Alisson's still out. People are forgetting this. Like, obviously having Virgil van Dijk in there, a massive leader, captain of the club, is huge for us. But when you look at it, that back line was, it was there for the taking, or, I mean, it should have been there for the taking from a big team. And to be honest, it speaks somewhat to the soft underbelly of Liverpool. Front six, absolutely incredible. And actually, you know, I think there's a lot to talk about there in terms of the movement, all those kind of things. But they protected that back line really well today. And I know that Brighton still scored. It was a pretty silly early goal to concede. And I know that there were still some vulnerabilities with, essentially, they come down the right-hand side. Why? Well, because they're looking to get at Conor Bradley. They're looking to get at Kwanzaa. They're looking to get at the weaker perceived side of Liverpool. There are two really battle-hardened centre-backs on the other side of that Liverpool team. So why would you not go down the right-hand side or Liverpool's right-hand side, their left-hand side? Other teams, I think, are going to exploit that more. They're going to try to exploit that more. And I think Liverpool kind of play into that, to be honest. We know where Mo Salah plays there. We know that if we put a midfielder just in front of it, we can protect it quite well. We know that McAllister is really good at drifting over there. Endo clearly seems very focused on that side of the field. And there are ways in that Liverpool cope with this, right? But Brighton tried to get at Liverpool's vulnerabilities. Boy, do I love their left wing? Boy, am I thinking, hmm, could we get another cool guy with like some blonde in his hair down there? Do we need him? Probably not. But it's always nice to have like a little guy that you can sort of grow. Anyway, point being, Liverpool in the midfield today had to battle because that is a hard, bright midfield to play against. They're physical, they snap into tackles, as you saw with McAllister, as you saw with a couple of players today, and they're never going to pull out those areas. They're always looking to get in Liverpool's faces. They're not, weirdly, like we managed to pass through their lines quite a lot, mainly because they don't have the speed in the midfield. But they were just awkward to play against. You don't want to dwell on the ball too long. It's a horrible conundrum to find yourself in if you're at Anfield and you're trying to like win the midfield battle. Anfield hates Liverpool not winning midfield battles. And then as soon as we got past that, it was sort of like, okay, what can we do against a relatively deep back line? Brighton actually overall very deep today. Liverpool quite progressed, really good shape, really good uh, systems. I, I feel like and the passing uh, was, was you know, we, they didn't really break us in terms of anything today. Liverpool, I know that it's going to be portrayed as a 2-1, isn't particularly strong. But in a weekend where there's pressure on them to put points up on the board, as there will be from now until the end of the season, and in the twilight of the Klopp tenure with, like, you know, however many games left, we needed to do a performance like that today. They needed a performance where they were basically just going to put points on the board, get the goals that they needed to, and essentially put in performances where Luis Diaz was out there. I feel like Luis Diaz is really coming into a great moment right now. He's really learning to run at other teams in the way that Klopp wants him to. There are times where he lost the ball, sure it gets away from him, and he kind of dances near it, but it's great to have. It's so unpredictable, it's so difficult. And then obviously Darwin Nunez, a couple of times I think he got found out for not having a particularly good left foot, but the right foot, very consistent. And again, a lot of play went through him. I'd oft, if I'm honest, I'd rather switch him and Salah a lot more in these games because I feel like Salah inside, a little bit deeper, works for me. And then Darwin Nunez just a little bit further up worries teams a little bit more. But what do I know? You know, Alexi McAllister found Darwin, uh, found Salah and didn't find Darwin. And that Salah goal was, the second one, was a particularly um, good one, mainly because Salah had just passed the ball at the goalkeeper before that. And I mean, like, passed it to literally, like, there you go, just pick it back up. And I get it, like, that is, you know, you've got it, you take, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take, but it was frustrating to watch as a Liverpool fan, put it that way. And now that I'm looking ahead to this, you know, the Liverpool game, uh, the, sorry, the Arsenal game against Man City, boy, am I rusty at this, by the way. Um, I'm basically just looking at Liverpool and going, we've got Diaz, we've got Salah, we've got Nunes, three fit goal scorers, Gakpo came on. 
you know, that's a relatively solid front line there. Harvey Elliott came on, looked pretty impressive. Uh, you know, do we really need uh, Trent back like that badly at this point, if I'm being frank? Not really. Um, but our team's trying to get at him. Yes. Is that because Joel Conter was also on that side? Yes. Did they really manage to get us all that much today? Only really at Van Dyke, weirdly. And obviously Van Dyke, leader in the team, you know, that he's always going to try and do the most. There are times where you can see that Van Dyke feels like he's trying to make up for other people around him or make up for the lack of structure. Joe Gomez at times caught out a little bit in terms of his positioning a couple of times today. But overall, pretty solid performance. Good in, good in there at right back. Could have switched to grass. A solid Joe Gomez performance. Switched into midfield very comfortably. Did what he needed to do. And I thought, I often looked at it and went, you know, he's doing, he's doing more uh, than we would have expected Joe Gomez to be able to achieve just a couple of years ago. So really fantastic performance from him. Very solid along that back line in general, apart from the Danny Welbeck goal. And very often now when teams score first, I sort of go, OK, you're waiting for us to unload on you at this point. Midfield-wise, um, Sobosly, I'm going to compare him to Jeannie Wijnaldum. The Wijnaldum uh, comparison comes from this. A couple of years ago, when we did have Genie and when we signed him, a lot of people were very excited to see what he'd do in this Liverpool team. Klopp kind of changed him as a player or changed what he did for Liverpool as a player. When he went away and did stuff for the Dutch national team, we were looking at it like, he doesn't do that for us. Sobosai is kind of similar. Brilliant technical performance. Brilliant in terms of movement. Brilliant in terms of the ground that he covers, the things that he enables. And a couple of times, of course, there is that shot on for him. But we know there's a more of a deep player in there. And that's why when you look at him, when you look at Alexis McAllister, those two guys enabling the people immediately ahead of them, McAllister through his passing, Sobosai through his winning the ball back, through uh, keeping the ball moving from side to side, from uh, moving the ball in the way that Liverpool want to move the ball rather than just like a lazy near pass. That's knowledge and that's technical ability that I don't always think everyone always has in every Premier League team. Like, you know, Klopp has clearly briefed him to achieve very specific things out there in the field, and I'm very much here for it. Like, I'd much rather have that. And it's mainly also because we have Endo in the team um, than Liverpool not having, like, that presence in on the field where you know there's something special that can come from him. You draw players towards him. He has a great gravity, does uh, our boy. I don't want to call him Sobo. Yeah. Dominic, Dom, yeah. Anyway, point being, all these players that Liverpool have at the moment have great gravity. McAllister draws people towards him. Sobosai draws people towards him. Salah draws people. Luis Diaz. And it creates space for other people. Salah got his open, wide open goal because of, the, because of the fact that he had space. Luis Diaz, again, like that's a different circumstance, but he draws people towards him. For his goal, it was more of he managed to stay on side, brilliant movement after a corner. Liverpool are very good at making the most of second phase plays, mainly because Liverpool have this like, um, they, they know that there are like plays that they can go through. So it's almost NFL style where it's like, if we do this, you do this. And they know that there are players that basically remain a little deeper, keep the back line deep for Brighton, and then Diaz can nip in. He scored that kind of goal a lot. Liverpool have scored that kind of goal a lot. Mane scored that kind of goal. Salah scored that kind of goal. Firmino scored that kind of goal. They're cheeky goals that the opposition don't want to concede, but end up conceding because Klopp has drilled this into his team. These are things that we, very often because we think of oppressing those kind of things, and we do think Liverpool's intensity, which did win the ball back, we don't think enough about the considered approach that Klopp takes. And I think very often that's overlooked. Anyway. Point being, at this point, Liverpool have put points on the board. They go top of the league. They're putting pressure on City and, yep, Arsenal, who kick off, as I'm recording this, in 10 minutes. A lot of Liverpool players deserve uh, credit in this one, but really, I think it was a good team performance. You have to play well as a team against Brighton. You have to play well if you want to win against Brighton from a structural perspective, because the Zerbi's looking to exploit the structural inequalities and weaknesses that you have. And that is why we haven't won against them for a very long time or, you know, done well against them. He's exploited us a lot. We learned a lot, and I feel like the, in these final few games where we're seeing Klopp have his final performance against Brighton, his final performance against these guys, these are the kind of times where it's like, this is the little pen, uh, what do you call it, like a accent at the end? He's just adding little bits on here. Ah, a final performance against you guys, fantastic. Ah, this final thing here. This is our last dance. It's not the last dance, but it's our last dance with Klopp. It's not anyone else's last dance. This is ours. And I, I'm re-watching the last dance at the moment with Jordan and everyone, everyone else involved. It's easy for other people to have like a very loud voice in that because you're in a particularly vulnerable time. You know that this is coming to an end. You know that this is something which won't last forever. And you're under pressure, real pressure, because everyone else has got possibly next season. I know that obviously Arteta and Pep still want to win. There are very different circumstances amongst each team, as I've spoken about uh, on this channel quite a lot. And what I love about this Liverpool side is 
that feels like that's going to get something special out of us. Jeff Shreves had a similar take the other day. He ha didn't pair it with all the other tactical analysis that we do on this channel. And it annoyed me a bit because I thought, I don't really want Jeff talking about Liverpool. I don't want people who, Jeff, by the way, I'm not a particularly big fan of Jeff. I, I don't like his punditry. I don't really like his coverage. I, I think he's got some good stories, but I, I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I don't buy into it, if that makes sense. I'm sure he's a lovely guy. But the point is, like, I didn't like that analysis because I was like, cool, give us something else. And what I'm going to give you here is this. Jordan, uh, Pippen, uh, Phil Jackson, all those guys. They understood the nature of the assignment and they didn't deny what was going on. I think up until now, there has been a denial from Klopp as to the final few games, these kind of things, not making it about him. To an extent, I think as Liverpool fans, obviously we have to listen to him. But outside of that, there can be chatter about Klopp leaving. There can be all this ideas moving around. And I think that adds to the energy in the stadium on the day. The chatter during the week builds up and we kind of, there's a great release inside the stadium during the week and internationally, obviously, but particularly inside the stadium. So what I'm saying is, this energy isn't just about positivity. It's about all of the nerves and everything else that are coming in the future. Feed all of that into this and let's get Liverpool over the line this season. Big pressure on Arsenal and City today. As a Liverpool fan, I will be obviously hoping for an Arsenal City draw because it leaves the most points between both teams. But if one team's wins or another, it still benefits us. Being top of the league massively benefits us. Putting the pressure on the other teams massively benefits us. Being ahead of it massively benefits us. Let me know where you would like to be going to the next game. What are you looking for? Let me know what your prediction is for the Arsenal City game. And I'll see you guys on, with a much more deep analysis tomorrow. Much love. Bye.